happened tomorrow night here at our banquet. But when we were worshiping God tonight down here, the Holy Spirit started bubbling up in me, and I don't want to. I don't want to distract from what He wants me to do. So is, he, is the cameras on? All right. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me, please, to the twelfth, fourteenth chapter of First Corinthians. Fourteenth chapter. If you if you learn to obey the Holy Spirit first, then everything else turns out better for you. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. And I want to speak to you not on the Holy Spirit. Oh, praise His holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When Casey knelt down here tonight in front of the congregation and made the statement, the Spirit of God started dealing with me and made the statement, you know, let's sing, the Holy, sing that to God in the Holy Ghost. God began to bring scripture across my across in front of me and so I just got back up and got my Bible out and so I will teach you tonight what the Holy Spirit wants you to hear I tell you it's good to get a message fresh from heaven glory to God forever 14th chapter of 1st Corinthians the Holy Spirit is I'm going to see you, you need to have the Holy Spirit in you and you get the Holy Spirit in you because you're born again by the Spirit of God and then after you get born again by the Spirit of God, you need to let Jesus baptize you in the Holy Ghost and begin to speak with other tongues. Speaking with other tongues is God's heavenly language. God has a language himself. You have a language of a natural language of whatever country or nation you belong to that they taught you when you were little going to school. But God also has a language coming down from heaven, his own language, and he wants you to learn two languages. The one that you live in here in America or wherever you're from, and he wants you to learn his language. God wants you to learn his language. Because if you let the Holy Spirit, the person that lives inside of you, when you get born again by the Spirit of God, you have the Holy Spirit does live inside of you. He is a person that's sent from heaven where there is no sickness and no disease and nothing except victory. He has all knowledge and he will do anything for you, but you've got to let him have freedom on the inside of you. Unless you let him have freedom on the inside of you, he's very limited with you and never do much for you. But if you let him have freedom on the inside of you, he will do anything for you and he'll do it for you all the time, every time every day, every month, and every year. Your life can be in abundance. You can have abundance of anything you want. The abundant life that God has given you and prepared for you through the Lord Jesus Christ comes to you and is imparted to you through the Holy Spirit. And he's a person that's sent from heaven that knows all victory. Heaven is victory. Completely victory. Heaven is total victory. And if you'll let the Holy Spirit live on the inside of you and let him do what he wants to do, he will get anything you want and he'll also change anything in your life that's not victorious. He will change it into being victory because he don't have any kind of thoughts except victory thoughts. That's the only kind of thoughts he has. And you don't know it yet. Some of you may not know it yet, but you're a desperate human being to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. After you get born again, Baptist people where I come from, they still don't know it, but they are. They need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. They need to know heavenly, God's language. God has a language that nobody understands except him. God has one. God has a language. Heaven has a language that nobody understands except God. And God wants you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit so you can have, and he wants you to learn to speak his heavenly language. The reason God wants you to speak with other tongues is because, first of all, he wants you to talk to him. In the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, the second verse, the Bible says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. God, for how be it, he, 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 no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. He speaketh, you speak mysteries when you speak in, in God's language. You don't know nothing you're saying at all. Nothing you're saying at all, but God knows every word. Every word you're saying. He knows every word you're saying. And the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, he can speak that language because he is God. God has three parts to the triune Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Well, when you get born again by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is the one that comes lives inside of you from heaven. He is the one, only one on the earth that's doing any work today. And he wants to bring heaven's blessing to you totally. The Holy Spirit wants to get heaven's blessing to you totally. And he will get heaven's blessing to you because you, you can't get heaven's blessing for you because you're too dumb. You, you, don't, you, you don't know how to get it. 
Heaven has everything for you. Heaven is beautiful and it has everything for you. And the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you, He knows how to get it for you. He knows how to get it for you. But you don't know how to get it because you're not smart enough to get it. But He's smart enough to get it because He's God and He lives on the inside of you. And He will heal you. He'll operate on you. He'll do anything for you. He'll make you rich. He'll make you strong. He'll make you full of joy. He'll make you full of power. He'll give you anything that heaven has to offer. Anything that heaven has to offer the Holy Spirit can get it for you and he will get it for you if you give him your tongue give him your voice box and some, spend some time talking to God God wants you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost to speak with other tongues to speak in the heavenly language because he wants you to talk to him God wants you to talk to him that lives in heaven through his heavenly language he wants you to talk to him you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost to speak with other tongues first of all so you can talk to God number one so you can talk to God God wants you to talk to him in his own language. He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to talk to him, not somebody else. He wants his relationship. He wants to hear from you so he can bless you. The number two reason you should speak with other tongues is because you need to build yourself up in God so you'll never get lazy, never get flaky. You can always do the work of God and it'll be thrilling exciting to you every day, every day, every day. Amen. Since I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues and pray in other tongues and speak with other tongues, I don't have any low days. I don't have one day up and one day down. One day I want to work for God, one day I want to quit. I don't never want to quit. I want to work for Him day and night. I want to get blessed uh, day and night. I don't never have any days one day up and one day down. God don't believe in Blue Mondays. He don't have any. He believes in no Blue Mondays. Some people ask me, he says, well, don't you, don't, don't you ever have a sad day? I said, no. Don't you ever have one day up? No. No, all of your days are supposed to be up. One day up and one day down. I don't have any of those. I used to have them when I only prayed in English. I had one day up and one day down. I'd lose the victory by Tuesday. Well, every week by Tuesday. When I only prayed in English. When I prayed in English only. And I was a, I, I loved the Lord. And I was a Christian. And I loved God. And I would pray in English. And I'd, leave, I'd go to church and get blessed on Sunday. Get blessed on Sunday. And by Tuesday afternoon, I'd usually lose it. And I'd start coming confused. I'd start coming confused. I never will forget one time I sat in one of my restaurants with a full gospel businessman and his wife and I asked him I asked him I said what do you do when you lose, lose the victory by Tuesday I get blessed so much and I feel so good on Sunday and I lose it by Tuesday and she said I just well she said I just uh, brother Norval I just rebuked the devil I said is that right well, first Baptist people don't know a bit more. They don't know anything about rebuking the devil. But I didn't want to act like I was stupid. So I just waited to lay left. And I went in my own restaurant bathroom and closed the door. And my mind was so confused. My mind was so fuzzy. And I said, I rebuke you, Satan. Wherever you're at. I don't even know where you're at. <laughs> I said, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I rebuke you. I said, I rebuke you. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I rebuke you. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I rebuke you. I said, in the middle of the floor, I said, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. That's what she told me. This full gospel businessman's wife told me to do that. I said, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And all of a sudden, after saying that several times, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. All of a sudden, all the confusion, the fuzziness in my mind just left in the bathroom was full of God's presence and my mind become normal and I said you mean this is all there is to get rid of the devil what have I put up the devil all these years for I should have been said I rebuke you Satan a long time ago well if you don't know anything then you don't know how to get it but the Holy Spirit he knows everything I mean he knows everything and the number two, why you should speak with tongues uh, a lot in your life is to build yourself up in God so you don't have any flaky days and down days and wondering days and lose your faith. No, the Holy Spirit never changes. He lives on the inside of you. You need to pray in tongues and speak in tongues a lot every day, every week, every week, a lot every week to keep yourself built up in God. Notice verse 4. He that speaketh an unknown tongue, he that speaketh an unknown tongue edifieth himself edifieth himself you need to be edified my brother and sister build yourself up in God build yourself up in God and the next number three reason why you should speak with tongues you should pray in tongues pray in tongues 
You, you know, really? Yes. Oh, sometimes I see people who say, well, I pray in tongues all the time. All the time. I said, no, no, no. Don't pray in tongues all the time because if you do, your spirit will get strong and your mind will get sick. <laughs> Running around with a strong belly and a sick mind. Strong foundation in your mind gets sick. That means you get weird. <laughs> get real spiritual. You get beyond the church and beyond the pastor. You stop putting souls because you're too spiritual. I'm looking for deeper things of the Lord. Sure you are. <laughs> Simple salvation messages don't get to you anymore because I'm looking for deeper things. And I got news for you. You're going to get them. <laughs> They'll be so deep you can't even find God. <laughs> you'll be running around in a state of confusion. And you'll eventually go broke because your thinking is all messed up. And you'll go broke and half of you'll lose your family and lose everything else. And you'll go broke and you'll just, you'll wonder, oh God, what happened to me? Well, you got too spiritual. God don't want you to get too spiritual. What do you mean by that? I mean what I said. God don't want you to get too spiritual. You get, I've met people who are too spiritual for God. Oh, I quit my job. God told me I had a... I counseled one time in Arkansas with a man, his wife, and two children. He said, I quit my job six months ago. And his wife said, yeah, and he's about to drive me nuts. <laughs> I said, why'd you quit your job for? He says, because I began to seek the Lord and for, and for spiritual things. And the Lord told me I had the same kind of mind and ministry that Moses had. I said, oh God. I spent two hours of my time in the afternoon talking to him. And I didn't even face him. He just like that wall back there. I couldn't get to him. Finally, I just got up out of my seat, walked over to him in front of his wife and children, and I put my finger in his face and I said, you have a problem. He said, what is it? I said, you're nuts. <laughs> God didn't give you Moses' ministry until you quit your job and let your family and, and your wife and children go and you can't even pay your bills. I said, what's wrong with you? I said, you're going to fool around and lose your wife and lose your children and lose this and lose that. And he did. He did. He sure did. He lost the whole thing because he had the mind. He said, I'm going to pray. That night he came to service and I thought everything was all right. He said, I prayed when you left and God told me you was right and I was wrong. I said, thank the Lord. <laughs> and then after a while, you know, he got back into it again. After a while, he got back into it again. And lost his wife and lost his children because he had the ministry and the mind of Moses. Because I'm looking for deeper things of the Lord. Oh yeah, I have Moses' ministry. I said, no, you don't have Moses' ministry, you flaky thing. You, you don't have Moses' ministry. I said, God hasn't called you for that. I said, God called you to raise your family and get a job and work, you lazy flake, you. <laughs> and go to work and, 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 and be nice and pray in tongues and uh, pray in English also. I want you to look over here at what the chapter, what verse 13 says. In the 12th, 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, verse 13. The Bible said, Wherefore, let him that speak in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. I never did know. I went for years. I never did know that I could interpret my own tongue. The first time it ever happened to me, I was on the, west, on the way on the jet plane from the east coast to the west coast. And I was in the rain and I, you know, you're there for a long time, for hours. And I was out looking over the clouds and thinking about everything so beautiful and I just started praying in tongues. And I prayed in tongues and I prayed in tongues. I just love me in the nickel, The tear began to stream down my face and the Holy Ghost started rising up in me. Suddenly, and I just laid my head back like this. I prayed for over an hour, about an hour and 45 minutes in tongues. And when I got through, it just left me. It just started bubbling up in me. Just all of a sudden, after about an hour and 45 minutes, it just left me. And I just, 
laid my head back and began to thank the Lord. I said, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God started rising up in me and then again, give out the interpretation. And I began to speak it out. Glory to God forevermore. I mean, the Lord gave me words in English for about an hour, over an hour. Gave me words in English for over an hour. And I didn't a bit more know what I was going to say. From one statement to the next, from one sentence to the next, I didn't know a bit more what I was going to say than nothing. I didn't even try to say anything. It just came to me. I just spoke it out as it boiled up out of me and boiled up out of me. Lord have mercy, I'd give, a, I'd give thousands of dollars if I had that on tape. It was amazing the things that the Holy Ghost said. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. Now I want you to look at that verse again. Look at that verse, the 13th verse. The 13th verse said, Wherefore let him that speak in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. You know, you can interpret your own tongue. Well, you can. You just have to learn how to do it, that's all. And the Holy Ghost will give it to you. Why does he want you to interpret your own tongue? Because if you pray in the Spirit all the time and you never pray in English, you build your spirit up. You build your spirit man up. You build it up. You build it up. You build it up. You build it up. But your mind gets flaky. Oh, it does? Tell me about it. What do you mean gets flaky? Pentecostal people, really, if you want to know the truth about it, are the sorriest soul winners I've ever seen. Well, they are. I come to the Southern Baptist movement where they believe they try to get everybody in town saved, including all the dogs and cats. <laughs> they knock on doors all the time. Baptists, that's the reason, they, that's the reason they got 15 million members in 37,000 churches. Because they, they believe that everybody in town ought to be saved. And sick. <laughs> They don't pray for healing, they pray for salvation. But they'll try to get anybody saved. I mean anybody saved. And if you don't watch yourself, you get over too far and just pray of the Spirit all the time after you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, you just pray of the Spirit all the time. You don't keep your thinking straightened out. See, you're strong down here in your spirit. Now listen to me closely. You think with your mind up here. You think with your mind. When you pray in tongues, God understands exactly what you're saying. But you also need to have your mind edified. Your mind becomes unfruitful. You have no vision of Seattle, Washington dying going to hell. You only have a vision of me and my wife and child and dog, me and my four no more. You have a vision of having your own family blessed and coming to church and making a success out of your business and you don't put much effort before to feed the poor or get somebody else saved or bless somebody because your mind becomes unfruitful. You don't think straight. Well, you don't. You don't think straight. Oh, really? Is that in the Bible? If it wasn't, I wouldn't be teaching it. I don't have a... When God called me, he told me, he said, no, I don't, I don't have any Norval Hayes gospel. There's no such thing as God having a Methodist gospel, and a Baptist gospel, and a Presbyterian gospel, and a Catholic gospel. God's got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You either believe it or you don't believe it. It doesn't make a difference what group you belong to. Besides that, you ought to forget about what all groups believe anyway and just start believing the Bible yourself. Amen. God calls you to believe the Bible, my brother and sister. Do you understand that? Yes. When God saved you, God didn't save you to live your life under the doctrines of men. He saved you that you could believe the whole New Testament yourself. He wants a relationship with you yourself. You have a right to believe the whole New Testament. Well, I'm going to go talk to my friend or my pastor and see what he believes. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's fine. But, but well, how was he raised? 
Well, he's a Presbyterian pastor or he's a Baptist pastor. Well, if you're dying with cancer, don't go talk to a Baptist pastor. I was raised in a Baptist church. Please don't go talk to him. If you do, you'll die. <laughs> if you've got cancer, you don't go talk to him. You have to go to talk to somebody that believes in healing. Because every man, when you go talk to them, every man will tell you the only, thing, the only thing they can tell you. The only thing they can tell you is what they believe. That's the only thing they can tell you. The Lord told me one time, he said, Son, every man believes what he's been taught. Every man believes what he's been taught. Make sure you teach people how to worship me. And make sure you teach people what the Bible says. And make sure you have scripture for what you're teaching. Don't just teach something if you don't have the word for it. I will go with you every, every service with signs following if you will teach my word for me. And I do teach his word and he goes with me every service with signs following. Glory be to God forever. Notice verse 14. The Bible said, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. If I pray, in other words, all the time in an unknown tongue, and that's all, my spirit prayeth unto God, my spirit gets help, but my understanding is unfruitful, unfruitful. My mind does not have no more creative ideas how I can win Seattle, Washington to God. I don't have any more creative ideas how I can feed the poor. I have no more creative ideas how I can bless the human race, how I can bless them. I don't have creative ideas anymore. My mind is unfruitful if I pray in the Spirit all the time. Faith cometh by hearing. You want to have faith in God? Then you have to hear something to have faith in God. You want your mind edified? Then let your mind hear things about God. You want to have your spirit built up in God and edified? Then pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in God's language. Talk to God out of here. When you speak in these tongues to God and you pray in tongues to God, you don't pray from your head. You've got to be kidding. You pray from down here when you pray in tongues. You don't even think what you're going to say from one word to the next. It boils out of your innermost being. Comes out of here. You understand that? But when you pray in English, when you pray in English, your mind understands what you're saying and hears words. Hears words that it understands. Hears words about God that it understands. And it causes your mind to be edified. It causes your mind to be fruitful. It causes your mind to be productive. It causes your mind to create things. You can get revelation knowledge from God. If your mind is not fruitful, you're not going to be a soul winner. You're, you're not going to let the Holy Spirit of God unfold some ministry to you that He wants you to do because your mind is not fruitful. If I pray in the tongues, if I pray in the Holy Ghost, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. God doesn't want you to pray in the Spirit all the time unless you have an awful strong vision of Seattle, Washington going to hell. God wants you to pray in the Spirit most of the time, but not all the time. Sometimes God wants you to pray in English. Oh, really? Yes, because it edifies your mind. It builds your mind up. It causes your mind to be productive. It causes your mind to be fruitful. Oh, it does? Yes, it does. You better believe it does. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You can pray in tongues uh, for six months and you can build your spirit up every day, every day and you'll be strong, you'll be strong, you'll be strong. But you still might not have any vision to win souls for Jesus. You might walk in this church every Sunday morning and walk out and walk in this church every Sunday morning and walk out and you never bring a sinner to this church. You never bring one. You never, you never bring one. Well, you bring one. I know why you don't bring one because you don't think straight. Your mind is not fruitful along that line. Don't ever get self-satisfied and let your neighbors go to hell. Don't do that. 
Well, let the people you work by go to hell. And you know they're on their way to hell. Show the love of God to them and try to get them in church on a Sunday morning. Don't preach to your people on the job and try to shove Jesus down their throat, you flaky thing. Don't do that. God said, go out the hedges and byways and compel them to come into the house of the Lord and hear Casey preach. Show your fellow workers that you love them. I have a lot, a lot of people works for me. I had people working for me for years in different kinds of businesses. Show people that you love them that you work with. Invite them to come to church. Go get them in your own car if you have to. Bring them to church and sit there and be real nice to them. Take them out to lunch the first Sunday or two and buy their lunch. Sometimes they'll get saved the first services. Sometimes they won't. Just love them anyway. Don't worry about it. Just take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Show the people you're for your friends and the people you work with. Show them that you're a first class Christian, not some quacks somewhere trying to shove Jesus down the throat. Don't show sinners how spiritual you are. It makes them mad. Show them that you're their buddies and you're their fellow workers and you're interested in them. Keep your mind built up that you can think straight. Pray in the Spirit most of the time, but sometimes pray in English. What do you mean by that? Try it sometime if you never did it. If you're not bringing anybody to church now, I dare you to try it. Start tonight when you go home or tomorrow. Walk the floor of your room like this and pray in English. Say, oh God, I pray for Seattle, Washington. Oh God, I pray for the people that's not saved in Seattle, Washington. Oh God, this is my hometown. I pray for people that's not saved in Seattle, Washington. Lord, I confess that I am a soul winner. Make me a soul winner in Jesus' name. I claim, I claim to be a soul winner. Oh God, give me a vision of people dying and going to hell. Jesus, I am a soul winner. I am a soul winner. And I pray for the lost souls, oh God, here in Seattle, Washington. I pray for them. Oh God, oh Lord, let the Holy Spirit live big in me and work with me, oh Jesus. Make me a a soul winner, oh God, please make me a soul winner. Make me a soul winner, Jesus. You make me a soul winner. Oh God, I pray for the souls in Seattle, Washington. Make me a soul winner, Jesus. And if you'll pray in English, and you'll pray that long enough, if you'll pray it long enough, if you'll pray it long enough, you'll become one. You'll get so burdened, you'll get so hungry every day to win a soul to Jesus. You'll get so hungry to take somebody to church with you on Sunday morning because your mind wants to be fruitful. But if you just pray in an unknown tongue all the time and you never pray in English, uh, the Bible says that uh, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. That means you produce no fruit. And the fruit you do produce is not sweet. A lot of people produce this fruit sometimes, but it's not sweet fruit. So it means nothing. God wants you to produce sweet fruit. Let your mind be productive. What shall you do then? Notice. The 15th verse, it tells you exactly what to do. The Bible always tells you what to do. The 15th verse says, what is it then? Okay, God says this is what it is. I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. So my spirit and so my mind can both be built up equally and I can be productive. My mind will be fruitful and I'll be willing to pay the price to do it because I've got the faith of God on the inside of me. I'm built up because I prayed in the Holy Ghost. I'm willing to do it, but I don't think straight. But if you'll pray, he said, I will pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. You will? Yes. How about right now? Is that soon enough? Just put your Bibles right there on your, on, your, on your lap. Just put your Bibles on your lap right there. 
Turn your face toward heaven right now. Lift up your hands to God and start praying in the Spirit out loud. Out loud. Out loud. You can hear yourself praying out loud. Out loud. That's right. Sadiya <laughs> Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. Now let me have your attention. I'd like to do that for an hour, but let me have your attention. Now listen to me closely. Pray that way most of the time. But not all the time. Your mind needs to have new, fresh ideas about getting people to the kingdom of heaven and blessing the human race. God may have somebody you're working with there may be somebody that you're working with and all of a sudden they lose their job. They don't have much food in the house and they have no job. Well, the Lord wants you to share your food with them until they get another job. He wants you to check up on them and help them when you can. But if your mind is not fruitful, you won't think like that. You won't. Oh, no, you won't. No, you won't think like that. I will pray with the understanding also. Now, first of all, I want you to pray for President Reagan. Then I want you to pray for the leaders of this world. Then I want you to pray for Seattle, Washington, this town. You're responsible for this town, not somebody else. You are. You live here. You're the best that God has in Seattle, Washington. If God can't trust you to bring souls into him in Seattle, Washington, There'll be a portion of the Seattle of Washington will go to hell. It'll be your fault. Jesus wants you to do your part to win Seattle of Washington to him. Now then, turn your face toward heaven again. Close your eyes. Listen to me closely. And I want you to pray in English out loud that you can hear yourself pray. Pray in English. I want your mind to understand every word that you say. And I want you to pray out loud. I want you to pray for President Reagan first. And I want you to pray then for the leaders of the world. Then I want you to pray for Seattle, Washington. And I want you to pray for your pastor. After you pray for your own personal pastor here, I want you to pray for other pastors in Seattle that stands behind the sacred desk in this city and ask God to give them special messages to win souls for the kingdom of God. All right, in Jesus' name, right now, start praying out loud. In English. Oh, Heavenly Father, we pray in Jesus' name, and I bring President Reagan before you, oh God. Oh, God, I lift our president up to you, and I pray the Spirit of God, Lord, would overshadow President Reagan and impart to him the mind of Christ impart to him I pray for the leaders of the world oh God the leaders of the world I'll pray for that the Spirit of God would also help them to make the right decisions for their country their nations the leaders of the world Lord I pray for Seattle Washington oh God I pray the Spirit of God would work with people to bring souls into the kingdom of God in Jesus name I pray for Brother Casey. Lord, I pray for the pastor of this church. I pray for Brother Casey. Lord, give him messages. Let him preach like a man from another world. Give 
Casey special messages from this pulpit. Lord, to draw people into here by the thousands in Jesus' name. Give him messages from heaven that will feed these people in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for the other pastors in Seattle, Washington. God, let the Spirit of God impart to them the riches of heaven in Jesus' name. As they stand behind the sacred desk, the sacred desk, as they stand behind the sacred desk all over this city, Lord, let the Spirit of God give them special messages in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name to win the lost of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus forever. Now pray for your lost loved ones. Pray for your lost loved ones. Your own family. The ones that's lost in your own family, pray for them. All of your cousins, all of your aunts and uncles, pray for your own family out loud. Tell the devil, take your hands off of my family, Satan, I bind you in Jesus' name. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I hate to stop you, but I must go on. That's not all of it. But that's the prayer part. That's it. Keep yourself balanced out by praying in the Holy Ghost most of the time and praying in English some. That your mind may be fruitful. That you won't let souls slip through the, your fingers and just die and go to hell. You didn't even try to help them at all. Don't do that. Keep your mind productive. Pray some in English so your mind can think straight. Ask God to give you a heart of flesh. That you won't have a cold heart of stone that you don't care for anybody. That's not all of it. You have to understand this, my brother and sister. I'm sure you understand it to a certain degree. I believe your song leader understands it. I believe this lady right here understands it. And I'm sure that a lot of you understand it. But you, under, you, you need to understand it every day of your life. I've been doing this for like 25 years. And every day of my life, it gets sweeter. Every day. Amen. It don't get old to me to work for God. The reason it don't is because the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you ever lose the joy of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, you've lost strength and you won't, never, you won't be worth 15 cents worth of nothing. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. How do you get the joy of the Lord? You get the joy of the Lord because you have a same ministry and you sing to God. Is that scriptural? If it wasn't, I wouldn't be teaching it. Sure it's scriptural. Look at the last part of that verse. It's not all of it just to pray in the Spirit and pray with your understanding also. That keeps yourself built up and it keeps your mind productive and fruitful. It keeps your mind built up that you can think straight. That's not all of it. God wants your life to be full of joy. Above all things, He wants you to be full of joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. Sing to who? You sing to God. Sing to yourself. Anybody else that's around you? <laughs> Glory to God forever. So let's sing to God. Turn your face toward heaven. That's where all the help comes from. Close your eyes. Come up here, honey. Get the microphone and sing in the Holy Ghost. I already know she knows how. Anybody that sings like she do, she could sing anyway. She probably could sing laying on these steps. <laughs> Glory to God forever. Turn your face toward heaven. Close your eyes. Turn your tongue loose. Don't sing in English now. Don't sing in English. Sing in the Spirit unto Almighty God. Sing to Him in His own language. Read on it.
yourself off from everybody around you. Sing in the Spirit for a few minutes. Sing in the Spirit a little bit more. Sing in the Spirit a little bit more. A little bit more. Shut everybody off. Get in with God. Close yourself in with God. Sing to Him. Think about Jesus. Think about Jesus. Think about Jesus. Sing to Him. Sing to Him. Think about Jesus. Sing to Him only. attention now. That's not all of it. But you sing in the Spirit for a while and you'll begin to feel close to the Lord. From your innermost being down here, the Holy Ghost lives down here. You'll be seen close to the Lord. But God wants you to keep all the fuzziness and the confusion out of your mind. Jesus wants joy in your minds. You'll have joyful thoughts and you can laugh a lot. Praise God forever. You'll have joyful thoughts, not a depressive mind and gloom here and gloom there. The Lord wants your mind to be full of joy. You know that song, Sing Hallelujah to the Lord. Now sing in English. Don't sing in the Spirit. Follow her in this song. Turn your face toward heaven again. Turn your face toward heaven. Don't look at her. Turn your face toward heaven. You're singing to God. Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. Now as she leads you, sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing to him in English that you hear your own minds. Every word that you say, sing to him.
every thought and be still right now. Now, notice, I want you to notice, just this short time together, obeying the scripture. See how your mind feels right now? <sighs> See how your spirit feels? How your mind feels? Blessed be the name of Jesus. You won't only have a strong spirit, but you'll have a strong mind in God. If you'll obey Him. Do that different times in your life, but do it continually. So you can keep it balanced out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. One more thing tonight I want to teach you about the Holy Ghost before we change the order of the service. Turn with me please to Romans chapter 8. This will get you victory every time. You're going to have victory in your life if you want to have it. Total victory. Thank you Jesus. My brother and sister, a lot of times in your life you'll find things that you won't know how to pray for. And sometimes God will warn you of things that's going to come to pass through the ministry of night visions in the night time when you sleep. If you ever study the Bible and other understanding the power of visions, I have a tape series on my table called The Power of Visions. It teaches you different kind of visions. Sometimes I go hold a three-day seminar in churches and speak on the power of visions and dreams and how they work. There's three different kinds of visions that God gives to a human being. The night vision you receive in the night time you're sleeping from God and God lets you see something that's going to come to pass. If you know how to pray, you can stop it. The Holy Ghost can stop it. Now you can't stop it because you don't have enough sense. There's some things you don't understand well enough. You and me are limited in our thinking. Now God is not limited, but you and me are. We are limited in our thinking. But the person that lives on the inside of you, he is not limited in his thinking, and he knows how to do everything. Save lives, prevent car wrecks, prevent deaths, Make a success out of your business. Rescue your children from hell. To heal you. To set you free. To save your family and save your neighbors. The Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you, he knows how to do everything. Knows how to do everything. Not only knows how to do it, he will do it. He will do it for the saints. He'll get heaven's will for any saint if the price is paid. But the price has to be paid. It does. Yes, the price has to be paid. Heaven does not come to earth cheap. Never did come to earth cheap. But you can't get heaven to earth. But you got to pay the price. If you don't pay the price, if you don't pay the price, then you won't be getting it. Romans 8, 26. The Bible says, Likewise the Spirit helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Maketh intersection, intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Blessed be God forever. Well, the will of God in every case is victory. Yeah, the will of God in every case is for victory.